just for the public record, just so I, mean, I know you didn't, not everyone came to every single meeting that we had, um, the reason I support the proposed zoning ordinance to establish a minimum 40,000 square foot lot size in which to keep the roosters is because the amendment will have no effect on our local commercial farms. The amendment does not impinge on the state of Maine's right to farm statute nor its definition of farm and farm operation, which are entities and operations associated with commercial production. And in Cape Elizabeth, commercial farms operate on lots containing more than 100,000 square feet, which is a little about two and a half acres. The amendment also addresses the real concerns and letters that we've heard from the public and testimony from residents requesting regulation of roosters in neighborhood settings where homes can be tightly clustered on lots that are 40,000 square feet or less. I support the recommendation to the Town Council because the Disturbing the Peace Ordinance does not address or apply to roosters as it reads, no person shall make, continue, or cause to be made any loud, profane, boisterous, unnecessary, unusual noises to disturb, injure, and endanger the peace and safety of others. And also in his email from December 23, 2010, Police Chief Neil Williams agreed that this section does not relate to a rooster disturbing the peace. And also the dog ordinance regarding barking and howling, it also does not address or apply to roosters. And in that same email, Chief Williams noted, this section deals solely with dogs disturbing the peace and not other animals. Therefore, enforcement on controlling roosters would not be by the police department. So the proposed zoning ordinance amendment provides citizens who live on compact residential neighbors, neighborhoods a proactive solution, while disturbing the peace recommendation offers a means of redress not previously available. But most importantly, I support it because neither of these recommendations adversely impact our local commercial farms. Anyone else? Jim. And as Victoria said, we have had many discussions on this, and I've consistently taken the opposite tact of Victoria. I think it's an un unnecessary regulation. It will not necessarily solve the noise problem. I want to use Alewives Farm as an example, uh, being there many times, you've got his chickens and turkeys right on a property line. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jody. And uh, he's got many acres, and you could still have complaints from his neighbor, even though he has, would have m more than 40,000 square feet, and uh, he could have neighbors complaining because it's right on a property line. So I know we've been over this many times, um, so I just think it's in one more regulation that's, that's not necessary and takes away from the rural character of Cape Elizabeth. I know. And as far as commercial farmers like Jody's farm, he is protected from nuisance laws. That doesn't mean you won't get complaints, though, about the, the noise. But then the police can let them know that our commercial farmers, and rightly so, are protected from nuisance. Yeah. But as, uh, I can't remember your name, um, Beth. Beth. It's a slippery slope, and I think it's... We'll continue to disagree on this. We will agree to disagree on this. Anyone else wish to make a comment? Carol Ann. In our many discussions, Jim and I have been on the, the side of noise ordinance as a means of addressing this issue. Um, and Victoria has very strenuously defended her position on the 40,000 square feet. Um, so I, I've wrestled with this a lot in which way to go, but one thing I'd like to do is see it move forward. So I'm, I really think it needs to move to the town council and, uh, we, and further, further option, opportunities to address it will be, be at the council level. <coughs> Anyone else? Madam Chairman, I obviously was not part of any of the previous discussions, meetings, so I, I must be honest and plead some ignorance as to what the positions of other people have been. Um, I guess my immediate question is, what is the problem? Well, you've had a couple, a couple complaints over the last year or two, I guess, of a neighbor. I guess I'm trying to think the only one I can remember. And it did get resolved um, neighbor to neighbor, as I understand it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. 
um, and the, the offending rooster all of a sudden was not there one day, as I remember. So uh, that's how that particular instance was resolved, but I think it also generated the, this whole thing. Uh, I don't know if he sent a letter. I don't remember how it all started. We have a lot of background on that. I, I was hoping yeah. not to get into that again tonight. Um, we did have a member of the public, though, at least one, who, who even after the situation was resolved, um, spoke and actually it's one of the interesting things about having numerous opportunities for public comment. Um, in one of our public hearings, the only person who appeared and spoke was uh, a neighbor who was quite adamantly against having roosters in these smaller, more compact neighborhoods and spoke for quite a long time. Tonight, we have only the other's point of view represented. Um, so I think no one particular hearing, I think, is representative of, of all of the opinions that are, are there. Maureen, you may have more detail. Well, you did ask the question. Um, I have a memo from the town manager to the planning board. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council last evening referred to the planning board a suggestion that the town should consider the status of roosters in Cape Elizabeth attached a letter received from a citizen on this topic. And this was from August 10, 2010. And there's a letter here from John and Deborah Malley saying, I will not read the whole letter. Um, I am writing to request that the town of Cape Elizabeth consider the creation of an ordinance banning roosters in residential areas. So as someone who's talking about, it sounds trivial and almost comical unless you are the one being awakened by a crowing rooster at 4 a.m. or earlier, 50 feet from your bedroom window. There's another letter from uh, Robert Chatfield, also dated August 17, 2010. Um, I am writing regard to the proposed rooster ordinance. I had the unfortunate experience of living adjacent to a rooster in a residential neighborhood in Cape Elizabeth and was very surprised to learn our town had nothing in place to deal with it. He goes on for a whole page. I can read it all if you want, or I can skip over it. Uh, there was another letter received from Steve Sullivan, August 14, 2010. I own two homes on Beacon Lane and two lights. Recently, a neighbor decided she would start raising chickens on her property. Um, he's asking for input because he would like the roosters regulated. And then there is Gib and Sherry Mendelson. And Mr. Mendelson also came to a planning board public hearing. Also, this is a letter he wrote dated August 14, 2010, where, to paraphrase him, um, not pleased at being awake in one morning at 3.12 a.m. with 10 crows from the rooster, followed by eight crows at 3.40 a.m. So there definitely were some people who have brought their issues to the town council, and that's why the town council referred it to the planning board, and that's why we're here tonight. Thank you. I think it's also useful at this point to review a bit what happens after our decision tonight. The planning board cannot on its own make any ordinance amendment. We've been asked to make a recommendation back to the planning board. To the town council. No, to the town council, that's right. We will then send to the town council a memorandum summarizing our recommendation and the input that we have had. The town council will then most likely refer the matter to their ordinance committee and the public will again have the opportunity to discuss the matter in that forum. So I think it's important for any of you folks here or members of the public who continue to be interested in this issue to understand that in some ways the process uh, of public input begins again with the town council and it, it's important to continue to provide your input into that process. So this is really just an interim step to refer it from the planning board with our recommendation back to the town council. Does anyone want to make a motion? Victoria. Be it ordered that, based on the materials submitted and the facts presented, the attached amendment to the zoning ordinance establishes a minimum 40,000 square foot lot to keep a rooster be recommended to the town council for adoption. Be it further ordered that the planning board recommends that the disruption of the peaceful, quiet enjoyment of property that may be caused by roosters may be more appropriately addressed with amendments to section 12-1-1, disturbing the peace, and section 7-1-4, dog ordinance. 
Do I have a second? Oh, Maureen? I suspect that there are some people who may want to vote on the first, uh, differently on the first versus the second motion. You may want to just vote on one at a time. We could do it that way. It's, it's whatever the chair would like, that's fine. Sure, let's do that. So you want to just do the, move the first let's, yep, the part of the motion? Do I have a second for the first part of the motion, the amendment to the zoning ordinance? Can I second? I'll second it then. So moved by Victoria Volette Violet. Volette? Volette, okay. And seconded by Elaine Fallander. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay, so that, that motion fails. A vote two in favor and three against. That was the portion of the motion relating to the zoning ordinance. And one? I am abstaining. I, I don't have enough information, Madam Chairman, to make any voting decision tonight. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second motion relating to the disturbing the peace and dog ordinance part? Carol Ann? Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that the planning board recommends that the dis disruption of the peaceful, quiet, and enjoyment of property that may be caused by roosters may be more appropriately addressed with amendments to section 12-1-1, disturbing the peace, and section 7-1-4, dog ordinance. Do I have a second? Victoria? Okay. Any discussion on this part of the matter? All in favor? Opposed? And abstention again? Yes. Okay, so four in favor, one opposed, and one abstention. So I believe we're finished with that item. That is the last item on our agenda tonight. So do I have a motion to adjourn? Second? Second. <laughs> okay, all in favor. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yeah.